Hey, what is going on, everybody? Hello oh. out there. Uh, welcome to another edition of Media Club, which we have every Thursday live on Facebook and YouTube. And what we do here in Media Club is we talk about all things Unoduce. This is an Unoduce production, uh, Unoduce Multimedia, based here in Lansing, Michigan. And so basically what we do is we talk a little bit about what we're what we're looking at uh, what we're working on for the week then we go into something that we all have that has caught our attention out in the world of media and then we follow up with a, a question in the q a section in which i have a good question on our production process so stay tuned all the way to that but nevertheless let us dive deep into who we are well right now uh, i am your host and owner and creative video strategist for Introduce Multimedia, Paul Schmidt. And we celebrate as we're going into our 21st year of doing media. And then over to uh, my right, I think uh, yeah, that, that way, you, James. The other way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm James. I am the creative live stream alchemist at Unoduce Multimedia. Uh, that's not to say I don't do any videos because I still do, but I'm in charge of all the live streams. But for more video work, we're going to talk to that guy down there. Yeah, so my name is Nick. I'm the creative video architect here at Unoduce. Yeah, so I make all of the videos that are not live streams here at Unoduce. Excellent. And speaking of all the videos that are live streams, as well as the stuff that are live streams, let's talk a little bit about what we are working on um, this time around. What are we working on? Nick, what's, what do you want to talk about? Yeah, so I will be talking about um, a couple weeks ago, we filmed a video for A New Life, uh, Prosthetics and Orthotics. Um, they are a really cool company based out of uh, Detroit, who make uh, prosthetics for people. Um, so we were able to visit their shop, you know, get to know them, um, you know, talk to the owner there. Um, and yeah, just really like, get to know them. Um, they're really cool, because uh, they seem like, like a, a more, you know, a more affordable option for a lot of people, or just a, a different option for people who want to get um, prosthetic made um and they really seem to be focused on just uh getting to know you know who their uh clients are and really just giving them a good uh product um and yeah you could really just just from going there and filming you could really see like the passion that they have uh for prosthetics um i mean th their owner um has a prosthetic so he's like has you know he knows you know the ins and out of what clients want and you know really just want to make clients feel comfortable and you know satisfied with you know this thing that's going to be attached to their body for most of the day um so yeah uh so i'm editing that video right now and yeah that's uh a video right now that i'm really excited about so i'm excited about this video too um i've known chris for a while we were both uh um participants in the Goldman Sachs 10,000 small business um, program in Detroit. And that's where I met him. This was way back in 2018 and um, met a lot of different really cool people in that program. And this was a unique um, situation. And so, was, and we've been talking for a while off and on in different, different aspects. And I'm so glad that we were able to come in and, and help him tell his story in in that way. So I'm real excited to see what what how this uh, video turns out. So awesome, awesome, awesome! It was ironic because I saw him this morning out of the blue. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Anyway, thanks, Nick. Can't wait to see the see the video. So over in the live stream world, or at least we're probably going to talk about live live streaming world right now james what are, what are you working on what do you want to talk about yeah i'm always working on live streams you know that uh but yesterday i actually started recording the virtual sessions for michigan community actions annual conference 
So this is going to be an ongoing project that I'll probably talk about a couple more times in the upcoming weeks, mainly because when I'm recording these virtual sessions, I'm also listening to these virtual sessions, and I want to hype them up because they're really cool. At least the first one I've recorded has been really cool. <laughs> Um, but MCA is a great client, and their conference this year is up at Boyne Mountain. However, we're handling all of their back end and managing their live streams from down here in Lansing. Um, but yesterday I got to record one of the keynote speakers who is also a virtual conference session speaker. Her name is Meredith. She's from Native North Tours, and she taught me a lot about the history of the Anishinaabe people in Michigan in the United States and how their culture has stayed as true as it could throughout colonization and how the governments tried to keep them down and all of this. Her talk, uh, well, one of her talks, not the keynote, but the virtual session <laughs> is Anishinaabe 101. And it was a great opportunity for me to both learn something new about Michigan's history and get an amazingly, amazingly good head start <laughs> on gearing up for this conference because it is not until like July 22nd <laughs> and I'm already recording stuff. <laughs> So you said she is from Native North Tours. Where are they out of? Um, that I don't know because I didn't look into it. But give me one second and uh, <laughs> Native North Tours. Let me just Google it. Oh, she, this is another. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. She's from. Hmm. Why doesn't it say? <laughs> uh, they are out of Petoskey. Interesting. Yes. Well, there is a huge connection there because that's where I'm originally from. That's um, so I know uh, I, I've heard of the Anishinaabe because um, that that is exactly where they're located. And there's a lot of really cool um, uh, things going on. And so, yeah, that's really sweet. Native North Tours out of Petoskey. I will have to give her a shout. And what was her name again? Her name is Meredith. I never got her last name, but I just saw it on the website. So let me scroll all the way down again. It is Meredith Kennedy. Meredith Kennedy. That's cool. Yeah. Anyway, so that's really cool. I mean, uh, Michigan Community Action, we've been working with them. Was, wasn't last year our first year with them? Yes. Last yeah. year was our first year with them, and we did their entire conference uh, virtually. We had a DJ in studio to cover the breaks. We were managing all of the back end of their entire conference. This year they decided to go with a hybrid. So again, they'll be up at Boyne Mountain and we'll be managing stuff here. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. It's a it's enjoyable to see how they want to incorporate technology to make sure that it's inclusive. Um and that's the big thing with Michigan Community Action. It's it this is all fitting within their their mission of trying to make this inclusive as well as, um, you know, simple, um, even though they're going to be in multiple places. And so it's really, uh, and we'll, we'll be manning three, I think three stations for this conference virtually. Yep. Three concurrent stations. It should be me, you and Kat on mm -hmm. those. Yep. And we're using a new platform that we haven't used before, but I took the tour and it's a really nice platform. Give them a little shout out to it's canopy. Um, first time we're working with them, but so far so good. Nice. Nice. All right. Well, I know that you guys are itching to get into the next section, which is about what we are paying attention to outside of the introduced walls. Let's. <laughs> I'm wondering if we should kind of like adjust that graphic a little bit. Yeah, because maybe. It's not always about what we're watching because I'm not going to be talking about something that I watched again. But yeah. Yeah. Technically, we are. But yeah. technically, we aren't. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to start it all off with a brand new podcast I stumbled upon uh, listening to a different one. And it is by a couple of folks um, that I really think do marvelous journalism work, and it is called "Will Be Wild." Um, what it what it is about? It is about the um, run up to the insurrection of January six. What the causes are? Who is affected? And when I say who is affected, this is about the folks that were um, either participating or 
or just in the fallout between the fam familial relationships with that. Also, um, a great interview with one of the Capitol Police officers who's, you know, moved on from being a police officer and now he works as a correspondent um, because of the simple fact that he cannot, he can no longer work as a police officer because of what happened. Um, and, it, you know, and it was just, uh, it's just a wonderfully, it's only a, well, they're adding, adding a couple bonus episodes on, but it was an eight episode arc in which they really dove deep into um, how this affected folks across the country. Um, and in either, uh, in their words, a positive light or a negative light. And it just really dives deep into um, really good storytelling and learning families and what they've gone through. And such as one of the kids, or I shouldn't say kids, but he was a, a, a young man who turned his dad into the FBI, who participated in the insurrection because he was a, scared of what, you know, what his dad was doing and what he was getting involved with and um, so on and so forth. And so it was just, it's just a really well done um, podcast. And uh, they've done stuff in the past that I really liked. Andrea Bernstein, she leads it. She's a really good interviewer, um, as well as uh, the her co co her her uh, coworker co producer whom I can't think of his name right now. His name is slipping me, but yeah, highly recommend it. It's really intense, um, and it's very very raw, and uh, so it's just interesting to see some of the uh, aftermath. Um, and what's going forward. And so they add, actually added bonus episodes on because of the simple fact that when their podcast ended, that's when the current January 6th hearing started. So that was kind of serendipitous for them. They didn't plan that. It just happened that way. So they they finished one bonus episode and they're going to another one. But that's uh, Will Be Wild. It can be found on any of your podcasting platforms. It actually hit number one, um, the number one podcast downloaded um, last week or something like that over the last couple of weeks. So highly recommend it. Like I said, it's really well told, really good story, good journalism, um, very fair um, to the people involved. Uh, and so no judgments. It was just one of those things where they're just showing what is going on, what happened and how, um, what the aftermath is. So, yep. Highly recommend it. So that's what I was listening to lately. And now I'm going to turn it over to Nick and James who are going to tag team on something that's caught their attention. I have a question first. Oh, you yeah. said you found this podcast while listening to another podcast. What podcast were you listening to when you stumbled upon this one? <laughs> well, there's one that I listen to every week. It's called this. Um, oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. I just <laughs> blanked. I blanked. Um, it's one I listen to religiously every week. And it is. Oh, my gosh. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm trying to be quick. Um uh on the media on the media from uh, uh uh so wnyc studios which is uh an npr affiliate um so yes and then they had a small segment on on that and so yeah that's where i heard about him like this sounds awesome and it was i whipped through it going uh on a longer trip so anyway nice. but i don't want to take up any more time all right. So anybody, you know, listen to Will Be Wild. Yeah. Nick and I have spent way too much time outside of work not watching anything except for video game stuff from Summer Game Fest. <laughs> Is that accurate for you, Nick? Yeah. I mean, yeah, pretty much. I guess it started last week. But yeah, pretty much like every day after work, just like yep. watching all these trailers and just yeah find a recap page and just open all the tabs that's what i've been doing yeah uh, all right so do you want to start 
with uh, yeah. what Summer Games Fest is. Well, yeah, there so goes my pen. So Summer Games Fest, for people who don't know, um, I think it's about like two years old now, but it really spun out of there was this uh, event or expo called E3, which for years and years and years was like the video game show every July, where it was like a it was at the LA Convention Center, and there was just you know tons of games were shown off there, and like that's where like people you know first saw like new consoles when they come um, when they're announced and um so like for years and years and years like throughout the 90s 2000s um you know me as a kid like i was obsessed with e3 like um every june just like oh man like have you seen like the new like resident evil coming out like just getting so uh excited um so that didn't happen this year um but we have this thing called summer games fest instead which basically is doing the same thing that e3 did uh where a bunch of new games are shown off and announced um yeah so i think me and james are going to talk about we're each going to talk about two games that really yeah, we just want to highlight a couple of games that stood out to us and that that garners our interest so yeah. let's just go in order here um and there you go nick that's all you yeah are we doing trailers okay So that was Cult of the Lamb. Um, it's uh, a game developed by a massive monster, uh, published by Devolver Digital. Um, it's coming, uh, as you can see from the trailer, August 11th. Um, what really stood out to me is um, there's a game called Binding of Isaac that I really like, and it definitely gives me vibes of that game. Um, so you're like going into a dungeon, and uh, each time, you know, the dungeon is different, and you're like getting upgrades, and it's kind of uh, it's it's all randomized um but the another cool hook with this game is it also has like a like a village town builder aspect um i listened to an interview where they um compared it to kind of like the animal crossing where you have um in the dungeons you'll find villagers that you'll bring back and they'll you know you'll get them to join your cult and it's like that balance of like cutesy with um you know dark um dark cult stuff um in in that interview, they also compared it to um, like Gravity Falls and like Midsummer, which are you know two things that I really like. Um, so yeah, uh, it just really it looks super polished. Like the art style is great. Um, so that's one that I'm excited for. The gameplay loop to me kind of looked like Hades mixed with a village builder. Yeah, like the yeah, fast paced, top down, isometric. Yeah, slasher gameplay. Hack Definitely. Slash. 
Yeah, and it, yeah. it definitely gives me the Binding of Isaac uh, feeling and like just like how the like it's like a square that you're going to and you're going into another like the the room layout look kind of like Binding of Isaac. But but yeah, James, you want to go next? Yes. Okay. So this is our other long trailer. Sorry for sandwiching the long trailers back to back. That one was a little over, over two minutes and this one's under two minutes, but this is Demon School. I'm probably going to cut the trailer off halfway through because it's fine. <laughs> You'll get the gist of it. That's all I'm showing of that, but <laughs> uh, this game looks incredible. I love the art style. I love how it combi combines like flat 2D pixel art with 3D worlds. Like, did you guys see that skeleton thing? That looked crazy, but it is a tactics RPG, which means all the combat is grid based, as you saw, and tactical. So you have to set your guys up in a strategic way so that they combo off each other to kill the bad guys before the bad guys kill you. Um, it also looks to be a rather indie take on the, the the popular games called Persona, which is like a high school simulator, but you're also fighting demons, and that's very much my games. I like those games, so I'm very excited about this. I'm also excited about Persona. Side note, at Summer Games Fest, they got announced that they're coming to Xbox Game Pass on PC and whatever, so there's yeah. three, four, and five coming to Game Pass. Um but this game is being developed by Necrosoft Games and being published by a name I cannot say. It's like Yzbrid. Uh, I haven't played any of their games before, but the publisher, I have played a couple of their games before, namely World of Horror, which was a really good like AC text-based horror game that came out a couple years ago. And the one before that was uh, VA11 Hall-A, a cyberpunk bartender action. Uh, where you learn the story of your patrons in the world as you play as a cyberpunk bartender in a cyberpunk dystopia. <laughs> and you're entirely at a bar learning stories, and it's fantastic. But this game looks incredible, and I am more than excited to get my hands on it. It's supposed to come out next year, but who knows? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that game looks cool. Like I like how it like plays its perspective. Like When they're like running through the mm -hmm. school, it's like behind the back, and then yeah. yeah, exactly. And up next, we got another one for me. This is a complete other end of the kind of games I play. <laughs> the trailer's only 30 seconds. Here we go. Colossal Kaiju have appeared around the world to bring an end to humanity. These Kaiju aren't killers, Lucky. They're just looking for love. So I actually played the demo for this game yesterday, and I, I gotta say, I loved the demo. It limited you to three dates with one person, and of course I chose Mothra, which is the Mothra clone that's made out of a forest in the top right there by the Kaiju title. But I love Kaiju, I love cute things, and dating sims can be fun. And this one is just, it's just so, like, I want to say it's got like a wholesome filter on destroying landmarks because the dates are you go to a landmark and if you destroy the landmark by answering the questions of the other monster correctly you destroy the landmark <laughs> and then kiss at the end of the date i will say i haven't played any of the games uh either published by this company which is top hat studios or any of the games developed by this uh developer which is squitter shins but when i was just playing this the other day i was just like this is this is a vibe i'm just 
smashing stuff up and dating a monster, a Mothra that's made out of a forest. And it's just cute and silly and fun. And I enjoyed it a lot. What do you think about that one, Nick? Yeah. It looks cool. I mean, it looks like a game designed for you because, like, you love kaiju so much. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I definitely, if, especially if it's on Game Pass, I'll check it out. Like, yeah. it seems like, uh, what was that game last year that was uh, Boyfriend Dungeon? Like, Oh, which got an update. I played through that whole game. That game was yeah. good. Boyfriend Dungeon, Paul, because kind of I see you're very curious right yeah. now. <laughs> it was a dungeon crawler, but your weapons were people. Like, they could transform between human and weapon. And when you would go to the dungeon with them, you'd go on dates with them. Yeah. It's a different kind of game. Anywho, All right, so, Nick, what you got? Yeah, really quick. <laughs> we're talking about Stray. I'll play some of the trailer. We'll play all of it because we don't. I don't want to run out of time. So here we go. <laughs> So that's Stray. Um, it's coming out, I think, July 14th. Um, and yeah, you play as a cat. Uh, there's also, you know, robot people that you interact with. Um, the robots are like the cool, like, monitor head kind of looking robots. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about this. Obviously, I mean, not many games you can play as a cat. And this one just looks like so polished, like the atmosphere, the world. I'm really excited to, to figure out, like, you know, what's going on, like the story, um, you know, I think they've said you're looking for your family, you're looking to like return to your family or finding what happened. So I'm, I'm really interested just to like experience this world and, and figure out, you know, what, what the story is in this world. Um, and yeah, it looks super cute. Like you can do cat stuff. So I'm, yeah, this looks awesome. Yeah, I've been excited for this one since they announced it a couple of years ago. Um, just because it's it's a completely different game than most games. It it looks like it's combining a walking simulator, but you're a cat, and it's cyberpunk and dystopia and robot people instead of people. Yeah. Why is that? Let's find out. Yeah. Yeah. Is this coming to PC? I didn't check. Not at release. Not okay. Yeah. So James will be coming over to my house to play it. Yep. Maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe just stream it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that is our little recap of Summer Games Fest. Um, we tried to pick games that weren't super AAA, but had our had our interest, and both of the ones I chose were very indie. Um, I just, I don't know, indie games capture my excitement right now way more than the next Call of Duty. Yeah. Back to you, Paul. <laughs> yeah, Paul, if... You're muted. Paul, out yeah, of those was... four games, what game would you play? What? Out of well, those four games, game? which one would you play? Probably Demon School. Ooh, nice. Demon School's got that mixture, man, that 2D, 3D, tactical... I don't know. That's my stuff. <laughs> so, um... Not so sure we're going to get in the question like I thought. So anyway, and so we might have to save that one for next week. Uh, but if you do have that question and you're itching to know what the answer, you know how to reach us. You can go to introduce.com. You can, uh, you know, reach us there as well as all the all the platforms, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of those platforms. You can reach us there. 
We're all on there as well as don't forget to subscribe to this. Uh, tell your friends, share this. If you happen to miss one, you can always catch the replay on our YouTube channel or on our blog the following week. So until next time, I promise we'll answer the question and we won't run we over will. with all these crazy yeah. video games. So do something creative in this, this next week and we will see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Out.